I am Jason Erickson. The lesson uh, planned for today is to first look at the, the 2012 IBC requirements and the ASCE 7 requirements that apply to ordinary systems. We will be focusing on ordinary Moen frames and ordinary concentrically braced frames, uh, but we will touch on ordinary cantilever column systems uh, at the end. When we, during the first section, we will also get into the AISC seismic provisions. We won't, uh, uh, th those portions of the provisions that apply to all systems, obviously including the ordinary systems, but we won't quite get through that before we have our first break. And then after that first break, we'll continue with some general provisions and cover the ordinary moment frames with an example uh, of the connection design uh, or evaluation of an ordinary moment frame. The last section will be uh, for ordinary concentrically braced frames, which includes uh, some examples that are somewhat limited in scope, but just looking at specific items within the design of the system. Again, focusing more on the connections than on the member design. We'll start by looking at the codes and standards that I will be referencing uh, in today's uh, discussion. Uh, I have stuck with the 2012 IBC. I know that the 2015 is, is definitely moved in and has been accepted uh, or adopted, I should say, in a lot of uh, areas now. Uh, but th from, from what I've gathered, there's really nothing that has changed that would significantly, significantly impact what uh, we're talking about. We're looking at ASCE 710, and uh, ASCE 716 is coming, uh, and I think there are significant changes. Again, however, uh, in terms of the, the narrow scope of, uh, somewhat narrow scope of what we're looking at in terms of structural steel for, for ordinary moment frames and concentrically braced frames, I don't think that the transfer to the, the 16 code even will, will have much effect there. And also we'll be looking at the uh, AISC specification for structural steel buildings, as well as the seismic provisions. Again, these are the 2010 versions of the, um, the 2010 versions of the specification and provisions. The 2016 versions uh, will be out, or the 2016 specification has actually already been released, and you can download it from AISC. And the seismic provisions I don't think are out yet, but should be out in the next few months if they are not. So there are some developments there, but uh, they are not included in uh, this discussion. Looking at the 2012 IBC, uh, what we find there in terms of what we're talking about today uh, will be the load combinations that you use and the fact that it references ASCE 7 for pretty much all the seismic loads. So that's where, we, where ASCE 710 comes in to play. It also has a section on the requirements for steel design code, basically meaning when are the AISC seismic provisions required. Looking at the LRFD load combinations, uh, there are the seven combinations there. The last two do include uh, earthquake or seismic effects. Uh, nothing earth shattering here, just to sort of summarize or, or actually review a little bit about what the load combinations uh, look like in the IBC. And this is a set of ASD load combinations, including the last three, which include earthquake uh, effects. In section 1613 uh, on earthquake loads, it does state that every structure shall be designed and constructed to resist the effects of earthquake motions uh, in accordance with ASCE 710. So that is a very broad statement that brings in all buildings. Uh, as we know, if you're in seismic design category A, or there are some other exceptions as well, that in those cases you don't end up um, actually designing for seismic or, or, you know, you have a limited number of requirements, uh, but they are still, seismic is still considered as part of the design process. There's also a series of seismic load combinations in ASCE 710, which are pretty much the same as those in IBC, although I think there are a few sl slight differences. But in those, and really what is more um, important in, in terms of this discussion, is that the seismic load effect E that is used in the IBC load combinations is defined in ASCE 710. Now E itself has contributions, the total effect E has contributions from the horizontal earthquake loads and the vertical earthquake loads. For the sort of, which, what I might refer to as the standard seismic load combinations, the horizontal component of the earthquake loads is simply rho times QE, where QE itself is the effect of seismic, uh, horizontal seismic forces. And E sub V, again, is the vertical components, vertical 
effects. So if you add that together to get E is rho times QE plus or minus the vertical load effects. This will kind of come into play a little bit. I know this is some review, but it kind of sets the stage for some things that we will look at in the examples in terms of merging the requirements from AISC seismic provisions with the load combinations themselves.